Hello everyone, I'm here with the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro Mount. Just got this delivered the other day and I've had the pleasure of using it for the past two nights. The tracking is amazing. It's been um, half an arc second or better. So I'm very pleased with that and that was the main reason that I wanted to upgrade. So the only issue I'm having at all with this mount is that these axes are very tight. Let me show you what I mean. So if I unlock this, if I give that a push, you know, you see it doesn't really, it just kind of sticks uh, in place. So it's very hard to, to know if you've got it balanced well. And I am also concerned if, that, if the motors are fighting that a little bit. And so maybe it could actually track even better. Not that I'm complaining at half an arc second by any means. Uh, but anyway, I don't think it's that hard to, to fix. Um, so let me show you what I'm going to do. Okay, we're going to start here on the deck axis. So essentially this bottom piece that holds the counterweight bar is a nut and it's putting pressure on a tapered bearing that's right inside here. And so if you unlock the clutch, make sure you do that because uh, you don't want to turn this thing against the worm gear. So you want to make sure the clutch is disengaged, but as you can see this is still pretty stiff. If I push it, it doesn't really move. So, um, so the first thing is to get this um, thumb screw out of here and just put that aside. The counterweight bar will just be hanging around, but that is fine. So the next step, there's three grub screws or set screws, depending on where you're from, in here. So just loosen those off. And once you have those loose, you should be able to, by hand, grab this and loosen it. And uh, if it gives you trouble, you could use a strap wrench like this if you need to. But you should be able to get it by hand, I think, unless they really tighten it up on you. So once you've loosened that, you can see now it, it spins very freely. But um, you really want to strike a balance here between, you know, how free it is and you don't want there to be any play this way up and down, which I don't feel like there is any, but I'm still going to tighten it up a little bit more. I want it to be free, but not, um, you know, with no play. So essentially what you want to do is tighten this up as much as you can while it's, you know, and it's still as free as you want it to be. And this feels pretty good to me. Um, right here and I'm not feeling any play at all on that so once you're done with that go ahead and tighten these back up again And there you go, it still spins good. So I'll lock that axis up. And then just a matter of putting the thumb screw back in. And that's it. All right, so now we moved around to the back of the mount and we're gonna do the right ascension side. Uh, for this one, you need now a two millimeter Allen wrench and probably a strap wrench. Uh, so the first thing to do is to take this cover off and pull out the polar scope. So mine's a little tight, but that's where the strap wrench can come in pretty handy. So it doesn't take much. Take out the polar scope. Uh, next step, there's a, a grub screw here and one on the other side to take off this silver ring. So just loosen those up. 
Again, this is a two millimeter. And that'll pop right off for you. So now that exposes this black nut here. It's smooth, which makes it um, hard to grip, but that's okay. So there's four grub screws on this one. And I was I already fought with this thing a little bit yesterday. So this first one here was stripped like to the point that I thought there wasn't a set screw in it. Um, and hopefully you don't have that problem, but if you do, I'll come back to that at the end of the video, how I managed to get that out of there. Meanwhile, let me loosen up the other three here. Now maybe you can get that to move by hand, I cannot. Um, so once again, I'm just gonna put the strap wrench on here. And see if I can get it to move. And it still hates me. Okay, so the strap wrench did not work. It just slid on, on the smooth surface of this thing. So I got a couple of uh, screws here. These are M4 screws. And I'm just gonna put them in these two holes here. Then I'm gonna use a screwdriver to get in between them so that I can give it a, a turn. Again, make sure that the clutch is unlocked. You don't want to put any all this torque on the worm drive. So, and finally, got it to move. So now this axis is nice and free. It just swings like nothing. Um, and you'll want to double check again that it doesn't have any play in it. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, off camera, I, I backed that off just a hair too much. I introduced a little play. So I just put the screws back in there, use the screwdriver again to, to turn it back in a little bit. And I'm happy with where it is now. Also off camera, I tightened up the four grub screws uh, and replaced the one that was stripped. So those are all set now. Uh, so the next thing is to go ahead and put the polar scope back in. That can just be hand tight, that's fine. After that, it's this silver ring here. So it's got a little mark on there, but also there's like definitely witness marks here from where the the uh, grub screws set down on it. So uh, if you want to get it back exactly where it was, you just try to line that up again with uh, the screw. And then if you go slow and just get it in a little bit at a time, eventually you'll find uh, you, you, it'll be touching and you can feel when it's back in the the same little divot that it made originally. So if you care about getting that exactly back the way it was, that's a way to do it. I don't know if it's the way to do it, but it's the way I did it and I'm happy with it. And so then finally, just this little dust cover for the polar scope. And as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see it on there. Yeah, you can see this thing is just flops right down and falls right to the bottom like it should. Um, so that's it for that part. All right, so that job is done. 
and it's moving a lot better than it was. And as you can see, that really wasn't that difficult. Nothing even comes apart, um, really. Just a couple things on the RA, but not a big deal. Uh, certainly not a risky job, in my opinion. So I promised to come back to this. If you had a stripped uh, grub screw, I looked online to find ways of dealing with that, uh, and I found a bunch of different options. But the one that came up the most was to use a Torx or star drive bit. Um, and that's the way that I did it, and it worked very well. Um, so I used a T8 bit, and that's just a hair over the two millimeters that the um, Allen key should have been. And with the, the pointy edges, it, it dug right in to the grub screw, and it turned out very easy. So um, I think that's the best way to go. If there's other ways, you can look those up if, you, if that doesn't work for you. Um, but I hope it does and actually I really hope that you don't even have a stripped one and you don't have any issues like this um, at all So with that, I'll leave you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it and uh, Have a great day. Thanks. Bye